guys, welcome back to Happy TV. So today we'll be directing to the video by giving the update of our crossbreeding project. And if you still remember the crossbreeding of these two, the full red and the double sword screen. So this I'll be showing you the final result. So after a few months, these are the results of our crossbreeding. And it's what I've told you from our past video that I really like the um, body color pattern of the results. And I want to pass that down to our future screen. So what we're going to do today, if you notice, there are males on the result who have clean caudal or red caudal color. And we have also from a line 1 and line 2, we've been prepared virgin females for them to cross to have good outcome. So now let's find the best theme, I mean the best male here as our materials for crossbreeding. And as much as possible, we are going to select the cleaner color on its caudal, and we'll be selecting two males here for line one and line two. So after selecting the best um, males for virgin females, we will now put the markings on the tank for us to trace soon their lineage.
result after few months this already the result it is a one month old juvies and this is the time for us of course to separate the males from females for future breeding reference and also to avoid any unwanted and unplanned breeding for a good pattern result and to avoid any calls in the future Separating male and female gaffish is often done for various reasons depending on the specific goals of the fish breeder or hobbyist and there are a few common reasons why male and female gaffish may be separated Breeding control. So that's the number one, of course. Guppies are prolific breeders, and of course we all know that. And if left together, they can reproduce rapidly, leading to overpopulation. Separating male and females allows us to control the breeding and to prevent uncontrolled population growth. And it enables us to selectively breed certain pairs to reduce desired traits or maintain specific genetic lines. Selective breeding also is one of the reasons why we need to separate them because as as we, the heaviest, may want to create specific guppy varieties with desired traits such as vibrant color, fin shapes or patterns. By isolating males and females, um, we can also carefully select the individuals they want, they want, uh, we want to breed and ensuring that specific genetic characteristics are Pass on to the offspring. Stress reduction. In mixed gender guppy populations, male guppies are may consciously pursue and harass females, leading to stress and potential physical harms like that. By separating them allows males to have periods of rest and reduce stress levels for both males and females. And also one of the reasons is observational purposes. Separating males and females may be done for research or educational purposes and allowing for the study specific behaviors, re reproductive strategies, or developmental patterns in a controlled environment. So it is important to note that all guppy keepers or fish enthusiasts choose to separate males and females. Ultimately, the decision to separate or keep male and female guppies together, it depends on the specific objectives and preferences of the keeper or a breeder. So our goal here is to separate them to avoid any unwanted results and to apply future selective breeding for more beautiful outcome. And now we only have gathered two males here. <laughs> I, I guess some of the males on this stage, some of them are not yet shows their true color and we only see them after a few more days, just like that. So this time, this is the final result. Actually, this result is close, having a close resemblance to Zinger Red. And I remember my friend, our body rotor, who have created that strain and shout out to body rotor. <laughs> and he also upgraded to albino type. And I just have to back cross to full red and do selective breeding uh, to have an albino to have an albino albino result, <laughs> right? And here also, and here also just happened that one of that one of my platinum white dropped their fries, so we need to separate them. And also, if, if you ask why we need to separate the gaff fish from adults, separating gaff fish from adults is really necessary for several reasons. Predation number one is predation. Because sometimes adult guppies, including the parents themselves, may prey on the fry. Guppies are known to exhibit cannibalistic behavior, especially when it comes to consuming their own offspring. And separating the fry from the adults ensures their safety and increases their chances of survival. And also competition for food, because guppy fry have specific dietary needs that differ from adult guppies. And we all know that. From fry typically requires smaller, more frequent feeding, of appropriate size food such as specialized fry food or finely crushed flakes so when left with adult guppies the fry may struggle to complete the food as there are results 
I mean, as the adults are more aggressive eaters and can consume the fried food before they have a chance to feed them. Also, growth and development. Because gabi fry need to optimal conditions for growth and development, separating them from adult gabbies allow you to provide suitable environments specifically tailored to their needs. This includes maintaining appropriate water parameters, such as temperature and water quality, which can be a challenging to achieve when fry and adults are kept together. Also, one of the reasons is a breeding control. If you have specific breeding goals or wish to prevent unwanted or accidental breeding, separating the fry from adults is essential. Allowing fry to remain with adults increases the chances of continuous breeding cycles, potentially leading to overcrowding and a decline in overall fish health, and we all know that. And also is selective breeding. And if you plan to selectively breed guppies for spe specific traits or patterns, separating the fry allows us to identify and isolate the offspring with desirable characteristics. By separating them early on, you can closely monitor their development and selectively breed them in controlled environments to achieve the desired traits. So those are the results why we need to separate the fry from the adults. Also, by supporting garfish from adults, uh, you create a safer and more controlled environment for their growth, development, just like that, and will be. This also enables us to implement specific feeding strategies, control breeding, and selectively breed for desired traits. Also this time guys, let's try to feed our gaffies with Chupifix worms right here. <laughs> Actually, Chupifix worms are a popular food source for many aquarium fish including gaffies. And also gaffies will know that gaffies are omnivores and enjoy a varied diet that includes both live and pre prepared foods. Chupifix worms can be a nutritious and high protein trip for, for our gaffies. However, there are a few important considerations when feeding chubby fix worms to gappies. It is crucial to ensure that the chubby fix worms you feed to your gappies are of high quality and free from contaminants. Because chubby fix worms are often harvested from unnatural water sources like rivers and or ponds where they can be exposed to pollutants and parasites. To minimize the risk, purchase chubby fix worms from reputable sources or Consider cultivating them yourself in a controlled environment. That's what we'll do. We will like to we like to uh, we like to culture them just like that. The hygiene and feeding frequency. Because Jeff effects worms should be rinsed thoroughly before feeding to remove any dirt, debris, or excess slime. Because overfeeding Jeff effects worms can lead to water quality issues, as uneaten worms can decompose and contribute to ammonia spikes. And feed to be fixed worms and only in moderation. In a few times a week, just like that. And remove any uneaten portions after feeding. 
Varicina diet. While tropific swarms can be a nutritious addition to agape's diet, it is essential to provide a varied and balanced diet overall because agape fish benefit, uh, benefit from a combination of high quality flake or pellet foods, specifically formulated for tropical fish, along with occasional live or frozen foods like dapia, brine shrimp, or blood worms. This variety ensures they receive a broad range of nutrients for optimal health. Also remember to observe your guppies' feeding habits and adjust their diet accordingly because some guppies may show more interest in tropific swarms than the others. As with any food, monitor your fish for any signs of digestive issues or adverse reaction and make adjustments as needed, right? So that's it. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. Hope you learned something from it. And by the way, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get updated whenever we have new uploads like this one. And please subscribe also to our second channel. Just click the link below in the description. And if you have any questions and clarifications, just send your message or happy page, have it CVDF PH. I'll do my best to answer all of your questions there. Also, please be safe guys. To God be the glory. See you on our next video. Bye-bye.